Hello and welcome to Tap That MTG, the show where we tell you everything we know about Magic the Gathering that is sometimes wrong, but fun super to fun to about. talk about. <laughs> I'm Leslie. And I'm Shauna. And today we are going to do a deep dive into Primal Genesis, one of the commander decks that's coming out mm. for Commander 2019. Um, we're going to talk to you a little bit about some of the rules that are on there. We're going to talk to you a little bit about each of the cards. We are going to go through all the cards. Um, and talk to you a little bit about some play tips and what to remember when you're playing these cards, what to have in mind before you put it on the battlefield. Similar um, to the last one. Yeah. Well, they might not have watched the last well, one. Well, they so. should go back and watch it. Um, if you it's haven't really watched good. our last one, we did one already <laughs> on Merciless Rage, which is all the, Better the madness one. Well, we'll see. <laughs> I don't know. You, I think you like this one, too. I do I like this one, too. They're, 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 they're both pretty darn pretty good. Darn good. <laughs> um... And then we'll give you a little bit of, uh, at the end, we're going to talk about how we would tweak the deck because most of the pre-made decks are ultimately tweakable and are meant to be tweaked a little bit to give your own flair to them. Mm -hmm. So Primal Genesis yes. has a an amazing, <laughs> an amazing commander. A handsome man. Yes. Uh, why don't you tell us about the commander? Me? Yeah. His name is Jirid or Girid. That's why I wanted you to tell exile. them. <laughs> How do we pronounce it? So he this? has been exiled from the Conclave. So let's near the Conclave has booted him out. So he is a 2-5 for 2, a red, a green, and a white. So you've got three colors going on in this deck. And so when Girard or Jared Conclave Exile enters the battlefield, create a 4-4 four, four green rhino creature token with trample. And whenever he attacks, populate. The token enters the battlefield tapped and attacking. Perfect. So you've got lots of green rhino stompies coming at you all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. And this is a great opportunity for us to talk about our mm -hmm. first rules yes. reminder. So populate. What the heck is populate? <laughs> so to populate, you're going to create a creature token that's a copy of a creature token you control. The important thing to remember about populate is if there is no creature tokens on the battlefield, you cannot populate. It's just like proliferate. If you have no counters to... Uh, increase you can't pop you can't proliferate so you have to have a token on the battlefield however this wonderful uh <laughs> commander comes with his own token when he enters the battlefield so um you get to create a 4-4 four, four green mm -hmm. rhino creature token with trample unless they kill your green rhino creature token with trample before you get a chance to populate which could happen um and should happen if you're trying to play against it <laughs> <laughs> then they yes, can't you do not want tokens out <laughs> However, this deck has some amazing, amazing cards that mm -hmm. just keep making tokens. So um, as with our last one, we talked about the different types of cards. So we're going to start <laughs> with talking about card draw. So the first card in our card draw um, for this deck is Garuk's Pack Leader. It is a 4-4 uh, beast and it costs four and a green and whenever another creature with power three or greater enters the battlefield under your control you may draw a card great little card great little card draw and in this particular commander deck almost <laughs> everything is power <laughs> three or greater just so. get your rhino token and you get to draw a card <laughs> exactly so <laughs> that's a nice little creature to have out on the battlefield and give you some card draw mm -hmm. so the next one is shamanic revelation uh, this is a in a couple of my commander decks it's a staple it's three and two green and it is draw a card for each creature you control love it and as ferocious you gain four life for each creature you control with power four or greater mm -hmm. so ferocious is not really a rule it's a it's a keyword ability keyword mm -hmm. thing so it's I think it's different sometimes. It basically just does what it says on the card. Yeah. So there's some rules in the comprehensive rules that ha are actual ability words. And they'll have rules text like populate. And some that are just keywords that it, you just do what's on the card. What does it say? Yeah. <laughs> Read the card. So in this case, you gain four life for each creature. Darn. <laughs> yeah. Well, and this one is tricky. You have to be careful because if you're going to draw a card for each creature you control, if you have 12 cards on the battlefield, it's it might seem nice to draw 12 cards, but you still have to discard down to seven. Yes. At the and you end do of have turn. to draw all the cards. Yeah. You, it, it says you have to draw them. It doesn't say you may draw up to. It mm -hmm. says draw a card, a card for, for each, each creature. creature. So be cognizant of that. You may end up discarding a bunch of cards if you don't have the mana left to play them. So 
Planning, planning. We talked about that planning. last time, you guys. So Harmonize is another staple card. It's draw three cards. It costs two and two green. Um, just a great little draw mm -hmm. card. Super simple and common. Yeah. A Momentous Fall is for two and two green. It's an instant. As, as an additional cost to cast a Momentous Fall, sacrifice a creature. You draw cards equal to the sacrifice creature's power. Then you gain life equal to its toughness. So it's a little bit of a, a rescue for yourself, mm -hmm. and you can do it on their turn if you need to. It's a good, hey, yeah. I'm going to do this really quick here before I start my turn so that you're ready for your turn. So you can mm -hmm. have lots of cards in your hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And yeah, it's a great to do it on their turn because yep. then you've already drawn, and then you can untap and play all those cards. Don't yep. do it at the end of your turn if you don't have the mana to play this exactly. stuff, because again, you might discard. <laughs> exactly. Um, mm -hmm. So Colossal Majesty, this is a nice little M19 <laughs> card. We play this in standard quite a bit right now with our green Stompy decks, but it's wonderful for this commander deck. Two and a green, it's an enchantment, sits on the battlefield in the beginning of your upkeep. If you control a creature with power four or greater, you get to draw a card. So again, the likelihood is you're gonna have a creature on the battlefield in this deck with its power four or greater. Mm -hmm. Elemental Bond for two and a green, an enchantment. Whenever a creature with power three or greater enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. So here we are with card draw yeah. again. <laughs> creatures entering the battlefield hopefully they don't have anything that stops your creatures from entering the battlefield because you <laughs> need to do that and then we have idol of oblivion two colorless um draw a card effect. yeah you can tap it draw a card activate this ability only when only if you created a token this turn so you do have to create a token that's probably going to be on your well it might be on your first main phase if you create a token mm -hmm. first, but you can also pay eight and tap it to sacrifice it and create a 10-10 colorly Eldrazi, <laughs> colorless Eldrazi creature token. So mo we put it in card draw because we think it's mostly going to get used for drawing a card. Mm -hmm. Just tap it, draw a card Is after you've created to a token. Um, no, maybe. Can't remember. I'm sorry. It was. Remember. Can't remember if it was or not. Yeah. Maybe. Voice of Many for two and a green. It's a 3-3 three, three Elf Druid, and when it enters the battlefield, draw a card for each opponent who controls fewer creatures than you. <laughs> There's a couple cards. Yeah. So you can tell plan by is. the flavor of that card, too, that the plan is you're going to go wide. You're going to hopefully have a lot mm -hmm. of creatures. Yep. Um, and, hope, and, and, I mean, ultimately, well, when we get to the creatures, you'll see, even if they board wipe, it's going to be fairly easy to build your board back up again. Mm -hmm. So then the one other really important thing is removal. We have to have lots of removal in our commander decks to yeah. get rid of all of their mean things. And the first one on there is Angel of Sanctions, which is one of my favorite mm -hmm. cards. I love this Play card. Played this in Amonkhet when it first came out. It's a three and two white for uh, flying. And when, when it enters the battlefield, you get to exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls until Angel of Sanction leaves the battlefield. So it just tucks itself right under. The added thing with this, though, is that it has Embalm, which is costs five and a white. And uh, what is Embalm? Embalm is when this creature dies, it's in your graveyard. Mm -hmm. So you can exile it and pay that cost and bring it back as a zombie and it does a bunch of things. So it depends on each card in each of bomb card is different. The yep. zombies are usually similar four, to four. usually four four. Yeah. Um and it's it's the same as this angel, I believe. Yep. So yeah. it's exactly the same, is, yeah. except it's a four four zombie. Comes back. Yeah. There's not a lot of removal in this deck, I don't think. But well, there's some for there's sure. Some, yeah. yeah. We'll get, we'll get so he gets to remove two, that Angel of Sanctions. Yep. But the Heart Piercer Manticore is a big, another big card from Ammon Ket. And it is a 4 3 4. Um, how much is he for? He's a 2 and 2 red. And he, when he enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice another creature. And when you do, this guy deals damage equal to that creature's power to target creature or player. And he embalms as well and becomes a white zombie Manticore. And yeah, he's just gonna be big too and doing the same thing. Sacrifice creature, you can do damage. Mm -hmm. 
And then we have Hour of Reckoning. Now this one costs quite a bit to play. It's four and three white, so it, it's it's pretty expensive. However, it does have Convoke. Mm -hmm. And uh, so for those of you who aren't sure what Convoke is, Convoke allows you to use your creener, creatures <laughs> to help, creeners, to help <laughs> you cast the spell. So for each creature that's on the, on the table or in play, you can use it to tap for the color of that creature or a colorless if you want. So if you have three white creatures on the battlefield, you can use them to tap for those white and it's destroy all non-token creatures, which is great. I love this card for this for deck because <laughs> it destroys everyone's creatures except for your tokens and you should have a lot of tokens. That's the plan. It just does destroy your other guys, but yeah, you've already used them. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> use them right. and lose them. Use them and lose them, yep. So the Phyrexian Rebirth, this is another commander yeah, staple. I have this, this in uh, one of mine as well. It's for four and two white. And it is destroy all creatures, then create an XX colorless horror artifact creature token. A token, so you could populate it. Where X is the number of creatures destroyed this way. <laughs> so that person that's playing <laughs> elves um, and has... 100 15. elves on the or goblins or goblins it has 100 goblins on the battlefield you just destroy them all i mean it's a sorcery you have to do it on your turn but destroy everything and get a including your stuff but, including your stuff but that's your final you're going to swing in with this giant thing and nobody's going to have any defense against it awesome and then you're going to populate the darn thing <laughs> So then we have Tristani's Judgment for five and a white. It's an instant, which is awesome. Exile target creature, then populate. Mm -hmm. So we talked about populate already, but just a nice removal. It is a bit expensive, this one, but it is a common. So, mm -hmm. yeah. It's there for mm -hmm. you. Populate. Beast Within for two and a green. And it is an instant. So then you can destroy a target permanent. Its controller creates a 3-3 three, three green beast creature token. Mm-hmm. So that's for any permanent though, so keep that in mind. Um, you have they have that really annoying planeswalker or that really annoying enchantment. Yeah, they get a green beast, but you're gonna have a way to deal with that beast rather than the planeswalker mm. or annoying enchantment. So yeah, it is important yeah. to remember it's them that gets that beast, so not you. Mm -hmm. All right, so Jared's. Belligerence. Belligerence. <laughs> it's a sorcery. It's uh, two red and an cool X. Um, really cool art. We had to kind of like go back and see if this was Rasborn or not. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, at any rate, uh, basically it deals X damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures. Where whenever a creature is dealt damage this way dies, then you get to populate. I love that all the removal in this <laughs> populates. Um, it does cost two red and X, but... And X is divided as you choose, so it, that's very mm -hmm. versatile. And with the populate on there, you're gonna be growing fast. Yeah. I love the the flavor on this one. Harmony is no longer an option. <laughs> <laughs> no longer an option. But he's been kicked out of the conclave. <laughs> he's sick of dealing with all the rules. He's on his own. Yep. All right. So slice and twain is. Seen that card quite a few times. It's two and two greens, and it's an instant and simple destroy target artifact or enchantment and draw a card. And if you watched our last video, if you haven't, you should. But if you watched <laughs> our last video, you'll see that there are a lot of really nasty enchantments in that deck that you might in want to get mine, rid of. Yes, you want so. to get rid of my enchantments for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so enchantment removal is definitely necessary. And then we have Naya Charm, and this one does three damage to target creature. You get to choose one of these. Uh, three damage to target creature, uh, return target card from your graveyard to the owner's hands, or tap all creatures target player controls. Lots of versatility there, depending on what you really? need. It mm -hmm. does cost one of each color, but three is definitely reasonable to play in this deck. Yeah, you should have that out. Yeah. Uh, Sundering Growth. It's another instant for uh, green, two green and white hybrid mana. And you can, it's an instant, like I said, destroy target artifact or enchantment, then populate. Mm -hmm. Simple. And the hybrid green. mana is for those that uh, yes. don't know. You can pay with either green or white in this case. Mm -hmm. So those could be two greens, two whites, or green and a white, or whatever you need to do there. Cool. So Oren Frostfang, it's creepy. He's a very <laughs> creepy looking card. It's snow three and two creature. green for a snow creature. Oh, I didn't even well, recognize I didn't he was a snow now. creature yeah. until now. He's a snake, a two six snake, and 
Attacking creatures you control have death touch. Bam. Attacking creatures you control have death touch. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you get to draw a card. <laughs> That's for each creature that does combat damage because it's whenever a creature. So the beauty of this one is that he doesn't have to attack. It's not He's when he attacks there. with them. He can just sit there on the battlefield as a 2-6 and be a nice little wall blocker. But he gives all of your attacking <laughs> creatures death touch, which makes Green. people not want to block. Mm -hmm. But and then they do gonna... because you don't want you to draw cards. They're stuck. It's terrible. Oh, my gosh. So we, yeah, te yeah that we, one's a We great put one. it in uh, removal, removal because we want, yeah. <laughs> It's death touch. We're going to get rid of their creatures. And, <laughs> yeah. So then the whole point of this deck is token generation. Mm -hmm. There's so, lots of cards for that. Let's talk a about lot, a lot. token generation. Oh, I get to do Garouk. You awesome. Our, our planeswalker, our one so, planeswalker yes, that's in this deck. Primal Hunter, Garouk Primal Hunter for two and three greens. And his, uh, he's three um, loyalty planeswalker for plus one. You get to put a 3-3 three, three green beast creature token out on the battlefield right away. And then a minus three, draw cards equal to the greatest power among creatures you control. So the 10-10. Ten, ten. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> whichever whichever creature's got the best, the and best then power. And minus six. You're only three turns away from that. Put a 6-6 six, six green worm creature token onto the battlefield for each land you control. Mm. Each land you control. So you have five for sure because you need five to play him. So five six sixes. Five six sixes. People are gonna want to kill him. He's bad. I love him. <laughs> he's one of my favorite planeswalkers. Yeah. I'm glad he's in this. Um, so then we have Wingmate Rock. It is another five mana cost. So three and two um, white for a three four flying bird. It has raid, and uh, basically raid um, activates if you have uh, attack if it enters the battlefield after you've attacked. So this one says when uh, wind or sorry when wingmate rock <laughs> enters the battlefield if you attacked with a creature this turn, put a three four bird creature token onto the battlefield. Uh, whenever this uh, card attacks, you gain one life for each attacking creature. So nice little life gain after the fact, um, and. The, I guess the important thing to remember with raid is that if you can attack with a creature before you play this, I know sometimes that's not a possibility, but just keep it in your hand mm -hmm. and play, play it again. in your second yep. main phase. You don't have to play it first. Wait till you have something to attack first and get that additional 3-4 bird. It's a good reminder for new players that you don't have to play your creatures in your first main phase. Yeah. You can play them in your second after you do battle. Mm -hmm. so. Uh, Dragon Master Outcast for one. He's a little 1-1 one, one Shaman who is back with a vengeance. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control six or more lands, put a 5-5 five, five red dragon creature token yes, that's flying please. onto the battlefield. <laughs> so don't play this guy until you have that. Yeah, he's just going to die. He doesn't need to be out there. He's not going to do you anything until no. he's going to do you something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you want, what is this on? It's upkeep or at the beginning, beginning of your, of your upkeep. upkeep? So it has to, you have, it has to last a it's turn. Live a turn. So, you know, you have at least six out before you do that. Yeah. So that you hopefully will get at least one six or five, five dragon token. Yeah, totally agree. Mm -hmm. So then we have Feldon of the Third <laughs> Path. He's a very, very thoughtful <laughs> Uh, human artificer. He costs one and two red, and uh, he's a two three. Uh, she will come back to me. Oh my gosh, that is so sad. Um, anyways, <laughs> you read the flavor text. I'm reading the flavor text and looking at the picture. Okay. Um, if you're listening to oh our my. podcast, you should watch the video or look this card up. Anyways, for two it's and cool. a red, you can it's tap awesome. him to create a token that's a copy of target creature card in your graveyard. So it's okay if your creatures died. Because you can make copies of them from the graveyard. Except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. It gains haste and then you sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. So basically you only get it for one turn. But he's basically just this he's cool cr artificer that's like, made I'm going to make a copy of that. Copy, he's made a weird copy of his girlfriend's head. Well, he's, he's in the picture. In, he's in love. He's in love. She's gone. He's made, She's dead. made a bust of her. I How suppose, do you know? Like, what might have happened? Yeah, I don't know. Tell us what you think might have happened in the <laughs> comments story for to this poor Felden. This poor Felden, the <laughs> artificer. I just want to oh, know what man. happened to him. Maybe it was Probably his daughter. Might have been. Could have been this giant adiphage that 
It was probably the giant out of age. What is this giant out of age? It's for five and two green. It's a seven seven insect creature. Seven seven for seven. That's not good. Brody trample though, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, put a token. Onto the battlefield. That's a copy of Giant Adafage. That's ridiculous. <laughs> it's stupid. It's, it's a stupid, stupid card. It's just a stupid card. It's not very nice. I can't wait to She's play. She's gonna that run card. me over with these things. Um, oh, but man. then we have just wait. Uh-huh. We have we Soul of Zendikar. Uh-huh. Four uh-huh. and two green for a creature avatar. That's a six six. Mm-hmm. So a six six for six. But it has the additional. First of all, it has, it has reach. reach. So. Sorry about your flyers. flyers. Uh-huh. And then you can pay five, three and two green to put a three, three green beast, beast creature token onto the battlefield. Or you can pay five, or in addition to, you can pay five because you don't have to tap. Um, exile soul of Zendikar from your graveyard and put a three, three green beast token you onto the battlefield. You can't even get rid of this stupid So, thing. well, you can. You have to exile it after. It can only yeah. do that once. Do once but but still. there was one in Marcellus Rage that <gasps> you could play from the yes the graveyard like that as well. But So this one is soul just super Zendikar. nice. You just keep playing, creating beasts <laughs> and doing shenanigans. I love it. Speaking of beasts. I have this card in my Land Matter deck. Rampaging Balos. It's a four and two greens. Two greens. <laughs> two green for a six six beast. Not a big deal, right? But he has trample and landfall. So whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may create a four four green beast. And it's you may. You may. So there's choices. But why wouldn't you? Well, you might get damage if you a creature enters the uh, battlefield so, and you only have right, two life right. left. So there's there's I May. guess there's the odd time. Yep. And so, sometimes yeah. you just want to be nice because, <laughs> you know, the you poor, play him and then play poor new player that you're playing has like nothing on the battlefield <laughs> and you want to be nice. Sorry. Because you should be nice to new players. Yes, you should. Um, so then we see Tristani, <laughs> Celestia's voice, for two green and two She's white. Train. Um, she is a dryad, of course, mm-hmm. a two five. And whenever another creature enters the <laughs> battlefield under your control, you gain life equal to that creature's toughness. All these six sixes, all these seven sevens, they're gaining you life. Mm-hmm. And then you can pay three, one, a green and a white, to populate and put another creature on the battlefield. I love this card so much. <laughs> She automatically gets you more life. Automatically gets you more life. For three, you it's just stupid. get more things. That's stupid. Like you're out of phase <laughs> over and over again. No. Oh, this is such a great. So you can see how what we were saying before that creating tokens and building your mm-hmm. board back up should be relatively easy <laughs> enough. So should be. what's this next I one? I get to do Desolation Twin because <laughs> I love Eldrazi. Uh-huh. But... <laughs> Um, so this is a 10, 10 for 10. My kids have played this against me. It's really not a very nice card. They have all these cards that make them cheaper, but it doesn't matter. Because when you cast this thing, you get to put a 10, 10 colorless Eldrazi creature token onto the battlefield. Populate. So, yeah. Every- as soon as you play him, you get two. Uh, so you're, you're getting 20, 20 for 10. Yeah. I just love that every time... I- it, something mentions creating a token. I'm like, and you get to populate it. <laughs> um, believe it or not, there's not that much populate in this deck. Okay, so Flame Rush Rider. When Flame Rush Rider attacks, put a token onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking. That's a copy of another target creature Gee. attacking. The ten ten. Ex- they exile that token at the end of the at the end of combat. So sure, you get to <laughs> like you know. It so goes away, but, but temporary, I mean, ten, a temporary 10-10 ten. Ten, ten or a temporary 7-7, seven, seven, especially if it just gave you 10 life because Tristani's on the battlefield. Right. <laughs> I mean, hey, why not? Oh, uh, lordy. So the beauty of this card, too, is that it has here. dash. And dash is a great oh, little God. mechanic. It costs two and two red for this dash cost. Mm-hmm. Basically, you cast the spell for its mm-hmm. dash cost instead. So it's a little bit cheaper. However, it doesn't stay on the battlefield after, which can be a good thing if you don't want it to die. You can just dash it out, attack with it, and then it goes back into your hand. And then you pay it. You have to keep paying for it, but so mm-hmm. long, board mm-hmm. wipes. I yep. hate board wipes so much. <laughs> so this card, fresh meat for three and a green. It's an instant. Create a three, three green beast creature token for each creature put into your graveyard from the battlefield this turn. It's just kind of gross. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm gonna Scavenger's let favorite stuff appetizer die. is death. Get all these things <laughs> back. Let's oh my continue god on. so then we have throg tusk four and a green it's a five three beast <laughs> and when throg tusk enters the battlefield you gain five life nice little benefit there but when it leaves the battlefield you get to create a three three green beast token not as good as throg tusk this is an okay card but hey i like it it's on <laughs> flavor it's mm -hmm. great flavor all right wayfaring tempo for one a green and a white it is an elemental and its power and toughness are each equal to the number of creatures you control. And when it deals combat damage to a player, populate. So it's just going to keep growing. Mm -hmm. See why it doesn't have trample. Yeah. I don't think there's... Yeah, there's not a lot of stuff in here that gives things trample. But mm -hmm. a lot of them have trample. Yeah. All of them are just really big. And you're going to have to deal with it in some way or another. Need an enchantment that says all things have trample. Yeah. Maybe that's an upgrade we can talk about. Yeah. All right, then we have Rock Egg. This is a this is a relatively inexpensive card. Two and a white. It's a bird, an unhatched bird. Mm -hmm. It's a zero three with Defender. <laughs> but when it dies, you get to put a three three white bird creature token with flying onto the battlefield. So it's like it breaks open. I love this card. It reminds me of Dragon Egg. <laughs> I play with Dragon Egg, and, mm -hmm. and I mean, there's Nobody no additional benefit, but it does. It stops people from wanting to swing because they don't want you to get that flyer. Vitugazi Guild Mage mm -hmm. for a green and a white, a 2-2, two, two. but he just is the gift that keeps on giving. Got he is <laughs> bare necessities, that's right. Um, he is for four and a green and a white. You can put a 3-3 three, three green centaur creature token onto the battlefield. And for two, a green and a white, you can populate. Mm -hmm. So it's just going to do a lot of work for you when it comes out. So mm -hmm. you'll want to use that. And then you want to use the next card, too. Yep. Second <laughs> Harvest, two and two green. For each token you control, put a token onto the battlefield. That's a copy of that permanent for each token. So we shouldn't have to say this. I'm sure we don't to all of you wonderful people <laughs> out there. Please make sure you have some tokens on the battlefield before you play this. Yeah. Use it wisely. Is it non-token for each token? So you might have a bunch of creatures on the battlefield and you think, I'm going to play this and get copies. It is for each token, token in control. Only. It has to be a token. Mm -hmm. Rootborn defenses for two and a white and instant that just lets you populate and your creatures gain indestructible until end of turn. That's a nice little save me card too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we have Mimic That for three. This is interesting because it has Imprint. So Imprint used to be a role an ability rule, but it's, not, it's been downgraded to a keyword ability, mm -hmm. which means, again, it doesn't have any official rules text. You just do what's on the card. So this one has imprint. When a non-token creature dies, you may exile that card. If you do, return each other card exiled with Mimic That to its owner's graveyard. Then you can pay three and tap it to create a token that's a copy of a card exiled with Mimic That. It gains haste. Exile at the beginning of your next end step. Wow, that's super confusing. Mm -hmm. But if you take it one sentence at a time, ultimately what you're going to do is you're going to, something dies, whether it be theirs or yours or whatever, there's always going to be something different going under it. You put your card, the card that you've exiled underneath it so that you know which one it is and you can pay three to create a, a token that's a copy of that card. And uh, once you, you only get to do that once. So. Yeah, it, ga it gains haste and then you exile the token at the beginning of, of the next end step. But that token, that that, that oh, stays, stays underneath. underneath. Okay. Yeah, so right. your mimic back, your artifact stays on the battlefield okay. and you can just keep paying ultimately when another creature dies, then so whatever's underneath it. it is okay. going to go into that player's graveyard again and you're going to have a new creature to put right. underneath it. So, so um, we need to get rid of this mimic batch. Yeah. Um, the other thing to remember is that tokens don't go to the graveyard. So um, it wouldn't be a, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, judges out there, but uh, it has to be like a creature that dies. A yeah. token wouldn't be exiled underneath it because a token yeah, disappears it once it's exiled. Token yeah, so yeah. okay, right, it says right in there. So that's just rules text. Just to confirm that. Yeah. yeah. Song of the World Soul for four and two white. Mm -hmm. it sounds like it should be a black card, but it's an enchantment. And whenever you cast a spell, populate. Simple. Simple, easy. You're going to put a creature out. I get to populate right away. 
And then we have Soul Foundry. I get all that. Why do I get all the rule stuff? So Soul (laughs) Foundry is four. It's another artifact that has imprint. When Soul Foundry (laughs) comes on into play, you may remove a creature card in your hand from the game. Then it has X and tap, and to put a creature token on into play that's a copy of the imprinted creature card, X is its converted mana cost, is the converted mana cost of that card. So similar, to the so other one. similar to the other one, but basically you have to pay, instead of just paying three, you have to pay whatever the converted mana cost is. It's a little more expensive, potentially, then. Yeah. Okay. Uh, growing ranks for two and two hybrid green-white mana. Uh, it's an enchantment, and at the beginning of your upkeep, pop- populate. Simple populate. Mm-hmm. But you said there wasn't very many. Well, there's enough. There, there's enough. There's enough. There's, an there's more than what I was thinking when we were so be there copying the and pasting and adding them to the document. <laughs> that's, yes, exactly. So that's a nice thing. So we have Atla, Palani, and the Nest Tender. <laughs> this is a great card. I love this card. It's one and a red, green, and white. So it costs four. Um, it's a two, three, and you can pay two colorless to tap it and create a zero one egg creature token with defender which is great however whenever an egg you control dies Mm -hmm. you reveal a card from the top of your library and you reveal a creature card then you put that card onto the battlefield and the rest on the top of your library in a random order so top of your library yes so reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card so you put the rest on the bottom of your library not back to the rest top. on the bo- bottom of your library. Yeah, sorry, it scared me for a second. <laughs> um, but so cool thing. Basically, yeah. you put a, an egg on the battlefield. When it mm-hmm. dies, it hatches into a random so that, creature from your deck. That includes that other egg. If the other egg is out, that little bird egg, and it dies, mm-hmm. you get your bird token. Mm-hmm. Plus, you get to do this. Never a green, no, a green egg creature. A green egg creature. Oh, it's a white egg creature. Yeah. All right. It has to be one of their creatures. All right. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> Full flowering for X, X, and green. Populate X times. It's a sorcery. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, choose that wisely. But <laughs> So, explain X, X, green. Okay. So, if you want to populate two times, you would have to pay four because there are two X's in here. So X would be two. Yeah. So you'd have to pay four plus the green mana to populate twice. Yes. So those who don't know math, basically, you pick what yeah. number X is and you have to pay that twice. twice. Yeah. Yeah. That's just something so, that yeah. it's hard to remember it when you're it's, first playing. You're yeah, like, what? Totally, I don't get it. It's totally confused all the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we have Celestia Eulogist, which is a Centaur Druid, three, three, four, three. Um, two and a green and it allows you to pay two and a green to exile so that's not a tap ability that's not tap just a you can yeah. do that as many times so if you have enough mana you can do this 10 times in one turn from a graveyard so it doesn't have to be your own you probably won't have all 30 of your land out i over exaggerated i never over exaggerate but sometimes. i don't know the way i get mana flooded i'd have all my mana <laughs> maybe it's a constant <laughs> thing Five in a row, you know, that kind of BS. Hate Mirage. So this card was in the previous video in my in my deck as well. Um, so it's a three and a one red. And it is a sorcery and you can choose up to two target creatures you don't control. And for each of those creatures, create a token that's a copy of that creature. And then those tokens gain haste. And then you exile them at the beginning of the next end step. So you borrow their two besties and swing back at them. So hopefully they block with their two besties because they won't want to deal with that. Hopefully. Yeah. I wouldn't want to. (laughs) So now we're moving on to the next section, which is other cool cards that maybe are just cool cards for being cool cards. Mm -hmm. So we have um, Amara Amara. Tandris. She costs (laughs) five and a green and a white. So she's pretty expensive. However, she is a five, seven and she prevent or sorry, it says prevent all damage that would be dealt to creature tokens you control. <laughs> Think about that for a minute. So <laughs> yeah, all your tokens are no damage. Protected. Not indestructible, but no damage. Yeah. Nice. So they pretty much are indestructible. <laughs> well, you can destroy them. Yeah. Yeah. Destroy abilities. Okay. Yeah. Lightning Greaves. 
for um, how much is it? Two. It's it's a commander staple, and it is a artifact equipment. And equip creature has haste and shroud. And equip is zero. Let's put it on right away. Stick that on whatever you want, and it is ready to fight right away and has shroud, so they can't do anything to it. Neither can you, though. Mm -hmm. So remember that. It's, it's important like to remember. Extra, but you can't do anything to it either. Yeah. However, the nice thing about this is the equip costs a zero. So if you yeah. do need to, let's say, equip something else to the, your creature and you've got these lightning greaves on it, you can just unequip for zero and re-equip it after you've done whatever you need to do with mm -hmm. it. But do for that speed. split second, they can do something to it as well. So um, Then we have... Marissi breaking or breaker of the coil <laughs> one red green and white and it's a cat warrior by four i love this card because it's a cat like <laughs> look at him he's so a fierce muscular cat he is so cool he is definitely a, war a warrior <laughs> your opponents can't cast spells during combat no more instance <laughs> bye bye see you later whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player goad each creature that player controls so, <laughs> goad. Again, I get all, you the, get rules all the rules. But that's okay. You're the smart one. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, with goad, basically what goad is going to do, until your next turn, those creatures um, attack each combat if able, and they have to attack somebody else. Not you. Um, if they're able to. If you're the only one left on the battlefield, then they have to attack you. But if there's other people in the game, which there usually is mm -hmm. in the commander game, you're basically just poking them. Saying, ha, ha, get you em. need to attack. Go get him. Go fight. <laughs> so, yeah. Sick him. And it's going to be a dog, though. Go to each creature that player controls. So if you yeah. if you do combat damage to all four people or in the game or all of the three, <laughs> three people in the game, then they're all just battle royale oh for the next little while. That's but they can't attack you, which is great. <sighs> so then we have, oh, next. Oh, Commander's Insignia for oh, two yes. and two white. It is an enchantment, and creatures you control get plus one, plus one for each time you've cast your commander from the command zone this game. So mm -hmm. this is the little commander bonus card in this set. And, yeah, it just sits out there and gives your creatures plus one, which is well, handy. And interesting, because a lot of times you're trying to save your commander one. from getting killed. But this is like, hey, we feel bad for you. Mm -hmm. Your commander was killed several times. Yep. So, you know what? Kill my commander, because... No, I have command insignia. Your commander would have plus one as well. Yeah. So that would make him a little bit harder to get rid of each time. Oh, do you have this card? <laughs> so Interesting doomed one. artisan mm -hmm. is two and a white. Uh, it's a human artificer. I love my artificers. He's <laughs> just making sculptures. Uh -huh. So sculptures you control can't attack or block. Whatever. You're just creating sculptures. <laughs> the beginning of your end step, you create a colorless sculpture artifact creature token with this creature's power and toughness are each equal to the number of sculptures you control. So you just keep making all these sculptures that are bigger and just bigger sitting there. and bigger. They can't attack. And they can't block. So who the frick cares? <laughs> but <laughs> you might need to. You might need to sacrifice, sacrifice a creature. Something. You might. You gain need life to based on toughness. Gain based life on, placed on toughness. There's, there's a silliness. All kinds of like when creatures enter the battlefield, this mm -hmm. happens. Mm -hmm. So you know what? I, it'll be interesting to see what that <laughs> that card does. It's fun. I like it. It'd be hard not to miss triggers when you're playing this deck. It's there's a lot really of really hard. Play, but that's what commander is. Think when you play. Lots of stuff. Mm -hmm. So a tectonic hellion for five and two red. This typical hellion, gigantic, doing a ton of damage. Eight five. It has haste. Mm -hmm. so that's not good. And whenever it attacks, each player who controls the most land sacrifices two lands. Yeah, you think you have a lot of land? Now you have two less. Thanks. Thanks for that. <laughs> So this is Tangrath, Angrath's little sister. <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm just sister making brother. Up. I don't I know. know. Uh, it rhymes, so it must be. He might it's say it must be related. related. So Tangrath sure. first mate. He's a family man. Tangrath first mate can't be blocked by more than one creature. So it's a five five that you can only block with one. Whenever an opponent attacks with one or more creatures, if Tangrath is tapped, then you may have that opponent gain control of Tangrath until the end of combat. If you do, then choose a player or planeswalker that opponent is attacking, and Tangrath is attacking that player or player. So basically, it's just 
<laughs> Whenever an opponent, this is not necessarily attacking you. You have this out on the battlefield and uh, Shauna here, she decides that she's going to swing in at everybody with all of her guys. You can say, hey, you know what? Tangrath feels like attacking too. I'm going to give him to you for this combat, but I want him to attack Joe over there. And you get to choose that. So 5-5 five, five <laughs> at Joe on top of that. Very bizarre. It's fun. Fun, yeah. That's what Commander is. It's just craziness. Yeah. So Cliffside Rescuer for one and a white, a 2-2. Two, two. And it's Vigilance Core Soldier. And you can tap it and sacrifice it. And target permanent you control gains protection from each of your opponents until end of turn. So it's it's a rescuer. That's mm -hmm. its job is just sitting What's protection there. protection again? Protection is they can't block. They can't use any, like if you have protection from red, they can't block it with the red creatures. They can't use a shock on you, on that creature. Um, so yeah. in this case, you have protection, you. protection from those opponents. So Yeah. So you wouldn't be able to, they wouldn't be able to get, get you with any red spells or anything. They can't do anything around. to you <laughs> or any of their creatures. Yes. And then we have another section. Moving on to the next section. <laughs> um, I, insert yeah. <laughs> space thing there. Uh, so these are cards that are kind of on theme. That uh, they didn't have specific. Uh, <laughs> they weren't creatures or they didn't have populate or whatever. But they're still on theme. So we have intangible virtue. Mm -hmm. Which is one and a white is an enchantment. Creature tokens you control get plus one plus one and have vigilance. It's, it has to do with tokens. It's on theme. All your yep. tokens get one plus one plus one as if they need more. But And vigilance. And vigilance. Can't go wrong with vigilance. <sighs> it's ridiculous. Yeah. What's our next section? Our next section is mana fixing because it's commander and you need to make sure you've got your mana that you need. And this one has three colors in this deck. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure you've got stuff. So the commander staple here is Sakura Tribe Elder for one and a green. It's a one one. And when um, you can sacrifice it and search your library for basic land and put it onto the battlefield tapped and then shuffle your library. So mm -hmm. it's just uh, going and searching for your land that you need. Player tip? Yes. When should you sacrifice this? On their end step. After, or sorry, when they're, you use it as a blocker, sorry. Use it as a blocker and then sacrifice mm -hmm. it. Yeah. So you can declare it as a blocker so their stuff doesn't come through yep. and then sacrifice it. So yes. a lot of people don't sorry. really understand necessarily <laughs> that when you when you uh, block with something, there's a block phase and then there's a combat damage mm -hmm. phase. So before that, you can sacrifice stuff. So cultivate is two in a green for sorcery. Search your library for two basic land cards. Reveal those cards. Put one on the battlefield, tapped, and the other in your hand. Then shuffle your library. So great little card. Mm -hmm. It's in most every commander deck yeah. that is pre-made at least. Yes, for sure. And explore as well for one in a green, a sorcery. You may play an additional land this turn, which is really handy. Mm -hmm. And draw a card. So, yep. Barsie does the same thing. Yep. One in a green. It's a sorcery. Search, your, search for a plains, island, swamp, mountain card and put it into the battlefield tap. Then shuffle your library. Mm -hmm. So basically anything you want to search for. Um, Pretty much. Yeah. It doesn't have Missing forest. Oh, no, it doesn't. That's green. It's green, but it doesn't have forest. But it's assuming you have a forest out because you had to have a forest to play it. Yes. But you're going to use this next staple, which is a soul ring for one. Actually, you're not going to use it because it's two colorless mana. <laughs> Anyways, for one, and you can tap it right away and make two colorless mana. Yeah. So pretty handy. Staple. Mm -hmm. And then Scare Tiller was in the other one. I think this mm -hmm. is a new one, uh, this uh, set. And whenever it becomes tapped, you get to choose one. You may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield, which is awesome, or you can return target land card from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Yeah. It's a 1 4, so it's a good little blocker, too. Mm -hmm. Creature. So then we move on to the land that comes with this deck. Mm -hmm. So it's um, got the good variety of stuff going on. So Cinder Glade, it enters the battlefield tapped unless you control two or more basic lands. Super pretty normal. Simple. And Exotic Orchard, another one that's in the other deck. You add one mana of any color of land your opponent controls or produces, which is great for um, if you steal creatures from them and you want to activate their abilities. Mm -hmm. um, in this deck, you're pretty much going to have most of the decks have one of your colors in them. Yeah. So. 
Evolving Wild is just the typical uh, tap it and sack it and search for a basic land and put it on the battlefield tapped. You gotta get more excited about I'm these sorry, lines. Evolving Wilds. <laughs> evolving Wilds. I hate Evolving Wilds. It's so boring. But you need it. So here's something we'll talk about when we talk about lands. Cracking lands. When should you do that? On the opponent's end step. Or at the end of your turn. At the end of your turn, yeah. When it's not your turn anymore. Yes. <laughs> Because you're going to search waste my time. through a hundred cards. You're in a commander game. There's four other people that are probably going to go before you mm -hmm. get to go. So don't crack it wait in there. until right before your turn and then crack yeah. it and make everybody wait for you to search for the land. Search for the land while everybody else at is the playing. end of your turn mm -hmm. while everybody else is playing. Or the end of the next person's turn. Whatever. You don't table have to do it. Table diplomacy rule here. Table, table a little bit of a, a hint that'll, yeah. that'll make your life easier if you're playing. And Rashawn I will get I grumpy with you. Because <laughs> I get grumpy. <laughs> so the next one is Command Tower. A lovely card. Command Tower and one mana of any color in your this commander's works. identity. Love Command Tower. I, I wish I could have 10 <laughs> Command Towers. Yeah. But that would be against the rules. But you can't. It's against the rules. Yes. Gargoyle Castle, which is kind of cool. It is add uh, colors, mana, to your mana pool. Or you can pay five and sacrifice it to make a... Three, four golem, or sorry, gargoyle yes. artifact creature token. Nice little adding token. Like making tokens with your extra land. Yep. That's kind of handy. So then we have a number of cards that touch, oh, I know, that, that tap for um, <laughs> two. There's done. four of them that okay. tap for both colors. So we have Sungrass Prairie, which taps for two, Boros Garrison, Gruel Turf, and Celestia Sanctuary. Mm -hmm. So all of those tap for both of those colors mm -hmm. at the same time. They are Very separate cool. colors, but nice little two, mm -hmm. two mana cost. But there's a downside for playing them. What yeah. Do you, what, do you, what do you have to do? Um, well, they enter tapped, and then mm -hmm. um, when it enters the battlefield, you have to return a land to your yeah. yeah. So that is, yes. You do have to pay. You do that. have to pay for that. So mm -hmm. please don't pay that. play this on your first turn because you won't be able to sacrifice a card. Pay you have to sacrifice cost. it. <laughs> or bring, bring it back. Bring it hand, back. So it's it's like pointless. Point point so, yeah. yes. Good all right. Point. So Ash Barons. These are a bunch um, of cycle lands. Yeah. Do you want to go through all the sure, cycle cycling lands? lands. So basically, you can discard it and pay one rather than actually playing it and go and search for basic land instead. So there is, what was the name of that one? Um, Ash Barons. That was Ash Barons. And then there's a couple other ones, I think. Oh, I guess Maybe there's not. more cycle in this one. There was a lot in the there's other a lot one. I thought mine. there would be more in this but, one. Yeah. Mine's got discard and stuff. So, <laughs> so right. Terramorph Terramorphic Expanse is basically the same thing as Evolving Wilds. You tap it, you sacrifice it to search your library for a basic land card, plug it into the battlefield. Tap to then shuffle your library again. Mm -hmm. Do it on your end step or yep. on their turn. And then there's a bunch of lands, dual lands that when they enter, they enter tapped, but they give you a life. Mm -hmm. So there is the Blossoming Sands, which is green and white, Kazandu Refuge, which is red and green, Grey Pelt Refuge, which is green and white as well, and Rugged Highlands. And yeah, That's it. so those all give you, when they come in, they come in tapped, and they give you either. One of the two colors, but they also get a life. Mm -hmm. And then we have Jungle Shrine, which is a great card because it actually can tap for one of three colors. Red, uh, green, or white, mm -hmm. which are all your colors. Um, so the other deck, of hey. course, because it's just a two-color deck, it didn't have any of these three-color menas mm -hmm. in there. Um, but yeah, handy. Yes. Uh, a little <laughs> reminder that it does say or, doesn't say and. Yes. Crosen Verge land. It enters battlefield tapped. It can add. Uh, it adds colorless, but you can pay two and sacrifice it and go looking for a forest or plains. Mm -hmm. So there are a couple lands that do that coming up here. So we've got Myriad Landscape. Same thing. You can go search for um, any basic land, and I think yeah, the Naya one does too. The Naya Panorama lets you go look for a mountain or forest mm -hmm. or plains. And yeah, so those ones, you sacrifice them, pay and sacrifice those lands to go get something that you need. Mm -hmm. And then we have Rogue's Passage. I am excited about <laughs> Rogue's Passage. I've yeah. always loved that. So target need creature trample. can't be blocked this turn. Oh. Really good card for this deck. Yeah. I think it's in the other one as well, but it's not really not really relevant for not yeah. that I don't know. deck. Maybe not. Um. So... Uh, one thing that uh, we talked about in our last one um, that we'll talk about here as well is mm. our 
a breakdown of yes. our card types before we talk about tweaks and how we would tweak this. So um, I guess I'll start with types. In this deck, we have 39 cards that are land. Mm -hmm. um, same as the other one. Same as the other one. And most commander decks need between 33 and 35 land. So when you tweak, you might want to think about taking some land out. Um, you have uh, 18 creature cards, one planeswalker card, seven sorcery cards, 10 instants, four enchantments, and four artifacts. So that's kind of the main breakdown there. And uh, out of the land, there are seven plains, four mountains, and eight forests. So you'll have to decide, depending on what you decide to tweak mm -hmm. um, and what cards you add in, which land you want to take out. It's yeah. not quite as simple as yeah. uh, a two-color deck. So just pay attention to that if you are going to take some land out while you're tweaking this. And pay, yeah, play, play it so that you can see what's happening. Mm -hmm. To see what land is missing or where your weaknesses are. So speaking of color types, what is the color breakdown? Okay, so for green, there are 20 cards. So half of the deck is green. So for sure, make sure you have green. And red is only four cards. A little splash there. And white is a few more at eight cards. So a quarter of the deck. And the multicolor cards are 18%. So just a splash of red in there. Mm -hmm. So you might not want to take out forests. No, don't take up ones, probably. <laughs> and then your mana curve. Uh -huh. The mana curve looks really nice with this one as well. Actually, I was quite impressed considering as we were reading through the cards, I kept thinking, wow, these are all really expensive. <laughs> but when you actually break it down, there are 39 zero cost, which is your land. And then we have two at one, eight at two, 10 at three, and nine at four. So there's definitely a lot more in this deck than in uh, Merciless Rage uh, or some of the other decks that cost um, four and up, but um, there's still a decent curve there. So yeah. you're gonna need, you're gonna, it's gonna take you longer, but hopefully you'll be populating and getting a, a large board fairly quickly. <laughs> So how do we tweak this? Yes. What, did you, what did you notice when you were talking about so this? So the removal was one thing that concerned me with this mm -hmm. deck. So um, when first thing that came to both of our minds when you're talking about green removal mm -hmm. is Rabid Bite. It's, it's just, just a standard easy yeah. card to, to think about and remember. Most of you have it in your, yeah. in your it's easy card to get. pool. Yeah. It's easy to get, so it's easy to add. And with all these big creatures, yeah, it's great. Mm -hmm. And then Thrashing Brontodon is nice as well. Uh, it's a nice little dinosaur. It's one and two green, and it's a three four, so it's a nice little blocker if you need it. But you can sacrifice it to destroy target artifact or enchantment. The beauty mm -hmm. of this one is it gets rid of artifacts or, or enchantments. enchantments. So there's versatility there, and sometimes mm -hmm. those artifacts are hard to get rid of. Yep. Unless it has an artifact that you want to get rid of, for yeah. sure. So a Thrash and Threat, which is one of those, um, it's actually played in Standard quite a bit still, I think. And it is um, one of those cards that have two cards on it. So you can choose whether you want a Thrash, which is for uh, two mana, red and green hi hybrid mana, for an instant that target creature you control deals damage equal to its power. So another rubber bite sort of situation. Mm -hmm. Or you can use the other side, which is Threat, for two, a red, and a green. And you can create a 4-4 four, four beast creature token with Trample. So yeah, that really right fits theme. in with the theme. So you've got a couple options with that card, depending on what you need. Yeah. Now, this next card, I totally <laughs> didn't think of. Shauna thought of this one, and I do not know why this is not in the main deck. Mm -hmm. Maybe they thought it would make it too powerful, but <laughs> if you by any chance can put this in your deck, I am definitely going to. Anointed Procession. Still not a cheap card. It is three yeah. and a white, and if an effect would create one or more tokens under your control, it creates twice that many. Twice. Twice that many. So, yeah, you create a token and another create token. Four, four, and, create another. and then if you have Tristani out there, you gain eat life. <laughs> that silly needs to be in this deck. Yes. Um, burning Anger. So we, we found this one, which is a an enchantment for four and a red. And <laughs> it is, you put it on one of your big guys. And you just tap your big guy and it says enchanted creature, enchanted creature has tap this creature, deals damage equal to his power to target creature or player. Yeah. So put that on your stupid Eldrazi 10-10. Yeah, I'm going to 10 damage to you. Yeah. 10 damage to you. Sorry. 
Period. And then shroud it with your lightning bolts. Yeah. Shroud it. Sure, yeah. And you just got Great. this little engine that you can just Great. keep tapping. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> That's a great card because it's mm -hmm. it's constant rabbit bite after yeah. basically that you can just tap. Yeah. You're and really if you like, can somehow protect it, because if they kill your creature, obviously your your enchantment goes away as well. So you need to protect it somehow. Mm -hmm. Um and then there was <laughs> Electropotence, which is two and a red, which is actually scary, quite cheap. Scary card. Or cheap. It's an enchantment. And whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay three. Um, if you do, that creature deals damage equal to its power to target creature or player. Again, creature or player, so any target, uh, basically there. And it's like Tolsner. Again, you pay three for Rabid Bite yeah. when it enters the battlefield. It's like Tolsner. I don't know if my people are playing Tolsner. Yeah. My my wolf lady. Yeah. They're playing her in main in some of the big decks because of that being able to get rid of creatures with that wolf that comes yeah. with it. I, I mean. Yeah. Rabbit Bite's good. These are way better if you can find them. But if you don't have it. that, that's okay. So that's another thing. When you're tweaking and when you're building oh, your own yeah. decks, you don't have to start with the most expensive cards right off the bat. And I think we have one more. Yes. Warstorm Surge um, for five and a red. It's an enchantment. And whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. Interestingly enough, that one is in the Merciless Rage deck, but it's not in this deck. Mm -hmm. So I believe that, uh, yeah, it should be. Yeah. Because your stupid 10-10 yeah. is going to deal 10 damage. So that was our evaluation of this one. We basically, yeah. we thought it needed more removal mm -hmm. um, and more single target removal specifically that can kind of keep generating. I love that one with the or player so that you yeah. can like use your, your creatures uh, by not attacking if you choose. And just uh, sit there. Just Who sit cares there. if you, you don't need to trample. You just sit there and tap it. Yeah. It's crazy. Do that on their end step. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have it there for a blocker on their end step. Tap it. Deal 10 damage. Yep. There you go. <laughs> we learned lots in this video, I think, today. I think so. Wow. All right. Well, thank you for joining us in our huge deep dive into the Primal Genesis Commander deck that is coming out very yep. soon. And we are looking forward to having it in our hot little hands yep. and playing with it. So 23rd Commander Weekend. Yes. So get out to your local game store and have mm -hmm. some fun with your friends. Commander's a great way to have fun with your friends. So in the meantime, tap those magic cards and have fun doing it. Night, See guys. you later, guys.